Hi everybody, welcome to Tabby in a Books, the channel where I and Tabby talk about all my books and all my bookish things. I am sure that you've seen the title of this video, so you know that today I am reflecting on my YouTube journey so far. Um, so just a bit of a background for anybody who's new. Hi, if you're new by the way. Um, I started my YouTube on the 17th of February. That was my first video that I uploaded and so it's been like three months and yesterday I woke up feeling very reflective and I was wondering why and I guess it's because my mind works in quarters and <laughs> halfway throughs and and all those kinds of things just because of my profession that I do like I'm an auditor we work a lot with quarterly reviews interim all, all those sort of things anyway not here to talk about my job um so yeah I have been feeling a bit reflective as of today, like as I'm filming this video, I have 614 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Thank you to everybody who watches. Thank you to everybody who likes. Thank you to everybody who comments. I really do appreciate it. Um, you have made me a very happy person. Um, not that, you know, my happiness relies on what other people do on the internet, but it's just really nice to be validated, especially when I get a comment with somebody saying, um, I love the way you speak about books or somebody saying, I love that you remind us to be kind at the end of each video. I really love that. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I've been feeling a bit reflective and I thought I should sit down and just do a quick video that I'm hoping to post this weekend. So just a bit of a maybe thank you to everybody who shouted me out. Um, Jen Campbell, she has been a big reason for my channel growing because she spoke about me in one of her videos and my subscribers blew up so quickly after she did that. Um, Hannah from Let's Talk About Books, she did the same and I, I really appreciate that. She said some really kind words about my disability visibility um, review which I really, really appreciate because she is somebody with a chronic illness and I, I didn't want to overstep in that video and I'm glad that she got that I was reflecting on my able-bodied person's perspective and how I had been conditioned and you know one of the things that I think uh, Britton Cooper talks about um, in one of her interviews with Kim Kimberly Foster is this concept that everybody has to arrive ready and that's not true some of us arrive unready and we can always grow and learn new things and expand our horizons and i really appreciate when somebody picks that up because i picks that up and celebrates it and that's what hannah did because i think we all need to be honest with the fact that we don't know everything and we should always be willing to learn so that was just hannah that was a long thank you um and then jerry over at onyx pages this was a big one for me because I have been watching her content for a really long time. Um, I think I discovered her and Jessie over at Books and Bowties around about the same time, which was years ago, um, when I found out that there's such a thing as BookTube. And I really love Jerry's work. I mean, how she celebrates African sci-fi and fantasy which is something that if i'm being honest i didn't even know we were allowed to like um and i think nidhi okorafor talks about this in one of her interviews where she says that she has had people say to her you know you're a great writer you just need to stop writing this nonsense when she was starting out as a writer she had teachers and lecturers and professors telling her that and i think i felt that about reading it and i felt that about writing it because i write a lot of that kind of stuff and i try very hard not to but like, I think Tommy Adeyemi said this, like sometimes she starts writing and she's like, okay, this is going to be a normal story. This is going to be a normal story. And then she had a magical night and that's how I am. So when I found Jerry and, and, and the, the way she celebrates sci-fi fantasy that is written by African authors, African-American authors, African authors across the world, I really, really have loved her work for so long. Um... And it took me so long for me to comment on her posts, on her videos, because I thought 
how can I like approach this person who is so good at talking about books and who is sounds so articulate and so smart so when she gave me that shout out I was, I was really ecstatic I, I just I, it really made me happy so thank you to her um, and she has a lot of great content so you should definitely check her out um, and then some other people that I feel like me and them started around the same time and we've sort of like been buddy booktubing together um, Laura over at the Reading Mushroom even though she does not like Legend Born she has really great taste in books and she has a really great perspective when she speaks about books she has tagged me in a video whose tag is still in my hard drive and I will upload that so thank you Laura for always being so supportive and fun to speak to um, and then Anna Wallace Johnson also really love her content she has I think I found her a bit later after I started but I know that she started relatively around the same time and I really enjoy her content as well and then there were some people who started before me but really like embraced me when I came onto YouTube and that's Nell and Scott over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot I love their content they are so smart and when they speak about books or speak about um bookish content or like bookish discussions like they one of the first videos of theirs that I watched was who should be able to review people of color books should white reviewers be able to review those and how should they go about it and I really really love that video the other person is D over at Heron's Corner she is such a sweetie and I love her content and she's so self-aware um, she's really young as well but she's so self-aware which is incredible because I don't think I was as self-aware she was when I was her age um, all the best with your exams because I know she's busy with exams right now and then some of my South African or fellow African booktubers um, Teho who are over at A Time to Tell Stories who was supportive when I started um, Nomza Moshangase who is a bubbly loving just a fun character you know in general she talks about books and DIY, all things DIY on her channel um, and who am I forgetting Sandra over at we read here who is also a great African booktuber who you should check out she doesn't post a lot of videos but when she does um, she does really good book reviews Baba Lo who's also a South African booktuber um, I bought a book because of her a book on uh, Sera Takama I'm really excited to read it it's a non-fiction those are the people that have shown me a lot of love since joining and there are many more who I may have not have mentioned but I will link your channel in the description um, when when I upload this video because I do appreciate the support that you have shown me so now that I've thanked everyone let's get into what has become of my YouTube journey so far and what I think of my YouTube journey so far um, so when I told my therapist about the fact that I started a YouTube channel she was really worried she was worried that I would compare myself to others she was worried that all the negative self-doubt that I have about myself would translate to 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 this channel she was worried that I would be fixated on numbers because I do tend to fixate on numbers of my job I'm kidding it's not because of my job it's just because of my personality um, she was worried that I, I would just basically it would be a negative thing actually she was really happy that I decided to do it because she knows how much I love books but she was still very worried that this is something that I decided to do and to be honest for a long time I didn't understand her concerns because I was like this is just a fun thing I don't want to overthink it and I'm still on that level for a lot of things like I for example I thought that it would really bother me my like my appearance would really bother me I'd really be bothered by the fact that I have dreadlocks which are locked I locked a few months before moving I think I locked them in September so I thought I would be really insecure about my dreadlocks I thought I would be really insecure about the fact that I don't wear a lot of makeup I, I'm not wearing any right now and when I do wear it it's a mess because I'm really new to it I would like to learn but I'm new to it so it, it doesn't look as great as it should um, I thought I would be insecure about the fact that I don't own a lot of tops <laughs> like even at work I think I have like five shirts for work and then I have five shirts for home I thought I would be 
I, I fixate on the fact that I don't have a lot of things to wear uh, for you know this way up is I guess it's how life is nowadays we all work from home so this is the part that matters and those things haven't mattered to me my hair my face and my clothes have never been a reason why I didn't sit in front of a camera I just do the bare minimum I just wash my face and I think that's enough I just throw in a headband and I think that's enough I think I've worn a head wrap once here um, and I just put on whatever shirt is available in front of me that doesn't have stains one day one time I did film with a stained shirt it was a lot um, but yeah all those things that I thought would bother me haven't bothered me which is pretty cool and then the other thing that I said that she my, my therapist and I worried about was the comparison thing and I think I've compared myself a lot um, not as much as I thought I would but I've compared myself a lot um, in terms of the number of videos that I thought I should be putting out in terms of the quality of the videos that I think I should be putting out I just got into vlogging and I, I'm not sure if it's my thing so I do a lot of comparison with vlogs oh should I be doing be more, more outdoors should I show more of my life but I'm not comfortable with showing so much of my life um, so it's just been a lot of those things going on in the back of my head I, I really don't want to film myself for most of my life I don't know how um, reality TV people do it because I really I really don't I, I don't like it I don't like to film myself reading I I mean there's so many books that I thought oh this would make if I film myself reading this it would blow up um, and Chain of Iron is one of those books because I know the fandom around it and I just couldn't bring myself to film myself and my reactions while I read it um, so just things like that that I have compared myself to others on I haven't gotten to the point where I'm comparing my appearance to the appearance of others yet I think I'm just too small and maybe because like I've mentioned in a lot of other videos I, I, I work for a very long time like I work more than 40 hours a week and it would be difficult for me to sit down and decide that I was going to compare myself to how everybody else looks it just wouldn't be realistic so I haven't gotten there yet but because of my personality I have compared myself um, with other people on other things um, it hasn't been to my detriment so far um, and I think everybody is usually very helpful like if you really want to know how to do something I found that if you just inbox somebody if they're on um, Instagram which is where I am they're pretty like quick to help you so it hasn't been that bad um, the comparison has been there and I and I think that's okay I think hey it's she talked about this in one of her videos where she said like you're gonna compare yourself to others and that's okay like just keep it moving you know um, I've even compared myself to others because I buy books and I've compared myself wondered ooh, should I maybe talk about why I buy more books which I think I'm gonna talk about in this video and because you know it's like I don't want to push consumerism but also this is probably the first time in my life when I've been able to afford books the way I can um, not because they're cheaper in this country but because it's just that is just how the cookie crumbled that before this I couldn't afford books the way I wanted to and I couldn't read the way I wanted to all the time and now I can so I am doing it you know so it's just stuff like that that I've thought about that I consider a lot um, and then another thing that has been on my mind since I started this channel that I didn't think would be on my mind a lot is how often I want to talk about um, random things that are on my mind <laughs> like I want to talk about random things on my mind a lot like I said I used to be a big Twitter person and I used to share um, random things about that were on my mind all the time and it's just yeah I want to do that a lot but I don't do it um, because I just don't think this is the medium for it or even if I think it's the medium for it I just overthink it so much that it's just like why bother like why bother so yeah that's been that journey on the comparison side what I've done on that side um, and and then one of the things that really did like scare me before I started um, uh, a booktube channel was the obvious ageism that is on booktube 
like it's 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 pretty obvious right you need to really put in the effort to find people over a certain age who don't look a certain way in order to feel like you can make content on youtube one of the things that i thought i would be insecure about would be talking about fantasy and um all the young adult books that i read as a fully grown adult at 31 and i think of all the people who encouraged me like just through watching their work while they were talking about the books and they were getting excited and they were talking about how great it is like have you watched uh jerry over at onyx page gush about legendborn it's 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 something to behold it's really amazing uh tori morrow's videos talking about and any of the number of books that she she read she recently did a video talking about shadow and bone which i haven't read don't think I'll read but it was really interesting to watch her reread some of the books and it was it was just generally interesting to see her get psyched and excited for something and and I think that that's that's one of the things that I really thought would bother me and since starting this like all of those layers have shed I talk about the books that I like I really talk about books that I don't like um yeah, I don't think I talk a lot about the books that I don't like, but I talk about the book that I like, I talk about the books that I enjoy regardless of what they are. I sort of stopped caring about what genre I thought they fell into. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the things that I have overcome since joining BookTube that I thought would be a challenge for me, but turns out it wasn't a challenge. I was just like, well, this is what you have. These are the books that you have. You may as well talk about them. And then another thing on my journey that I I thought that I was really insecure about was the fact that I knew that I would invest in this particular project. Um, I got myself a ring light because, you know, I think Rudo over at Basic Girl Reads, who is another um, African booktuber who who lives in the UK said that the weather here like you can't rely on sunlight what sunlight um yeah and I, I knew that I would invest in it and I and I you know when I watch a lot of videos on YouTube about how to get started it's always like don't worry you don't have to have the best thing you don't have to have that da, 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 da. and I definitely agree that is so true you don't have to invest if you don't want to invest, if you don't have the money to invest, it shouldn't be something that keeps you from coming on here and talking about books. But I knew that I wasn't going to want to record on my phone. And like I agonized over getting a camera, like just in the weirdest way where I was like, should I get it? Should I not get it? Should I get it? And like that's that's one of the things that I didn't anticipate going through. <laughs> like I thought that I wouldn't get a camera because I thought I wanted to see if I would meet a particular milestone before I could get a camera but I was shocked by how quickly I got a camera and then I put off getting a tripod which I just got like two weeks ago and it's been such a game changer because I've been putting my 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 camera on my chair and it's been really cool just allowing myself to have fun in that way and having fun with my money because if you're a South African or if you're anybody actually, maybe it's not a South African phenomenon, but I know that we exist in it um, so freely because that is my experience. So that's what I can speak to. But you walk a thin line between um, having money and not having money, you know? You walk a line of saying, I can be in this particular place and eat in this particular way but I know that somebody who is very close to me can't experience this sort of wealth so a lot of us have these things where we're caring for other family members we're paying for school fees we're doing and I'm one of those people um, and we have all those things and then when you when like me you get to a point where you can do you can take care of your family quite comfortably and then also live a life that is that that is good for you right because there's a there are many ways to live a good life um you start feeling very guilty and i have a lot of that guilt that's something that i have to work through in therapy so that is something that you have to navigate you know this life of having and this life of not having and because i'm so accustomed to the life of not having 
it took me a long time to accept that I do have now and if I want to I can and so I got a camera I, I buy books because I can because I haven't always been able to and because I can I'm not saying that I'm over consuming just to make up for lost time no these are really things that I really enjoy like my camera I don't just use it for filming now, I use it for taking a lot of pictures of the puppy who doesn't want to sit still. He's never going to be an Insta pup. I don't know guys, it's just not working out for us. But because Peppa is just, he's just not here for it. Um, so yeah, so just things like that that I have had to overcome since starting this channel. I've had to overcome um, a fixation on subscriber count and a fixation on comments and likes. I've had to overcome a uh, fear of a person who looks like me talking about fantasy and the books that I talk about. I've had to overcome the fact that I am now part, I am now comfortable enough to afford certain things and it's okay for me to indulge in my hobbies. Like it's fully okay. It's not a bad thing. Shay talked about this in a video as well. Like it's not a bad thing. I shouldn't feel bad. And I've just had to come to terms with all those things. I've had to overcome all those things. And YouTube has really helped me with doing that because, you know, it really did translate to my life in that I no longer not tell people what I'm reading because, you know, there was a point where I would share a book and somebody would be like, oh, you're reading one of these children's books. And I'd be like, yeah, but I also read this, like I mentioned, a nonfiction to balance it out. And I don't feel the need to do that anymore. I'm just like, yeah, and. Um, so it's just been a really interesting journey for me. I think I have loved being a part of a community. Um, I think in my newbie booktube attack, I mentioned that I want to make friends. I think I've been able to sort of make internet friends um, through this, which is the most comfortable sort of friendship for me because I am an introvert. So like internet friendship is like, let's do this. I've, I've been I've managed to do that I've learned a lot I've I've really had a good time being here and I, I think when I sat down to film this I thought I was gonna come up with a lot of negative things to say but now that I'm here I don't have negative things to say I'm not sure how coherent this is and I'm not saying that all the other things haven't affected me like I have also been in a I've also reached a point where I felt like I was pushing myself too hard. That's why I moved to one video a week instead of two videos a week. And that's a goal that I failed because I set that goal for myself in my goals video. I have also felt like I don't want to read this book, but I feel like I need to read it because, you know, it's on a list and blah, 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 blah. And I've just had to t tell myself, like, if you don't want to read it, don't read it. Um... I've also fallen to the, I've also fallen prey to saying that I need to read a certain number of books and I again have to just remind myself that no I don't, like, <laughs> no I don't, it's, it's, it's not that serious, you know, at the end of the day it would be fantastic to read a ton of books but I, I don't, I can't and that's okay. I will say that the good for me personally far outweighs the bad because I haven't had much bad even in the instances that I mentioned wherein I felt like I had to overcome certain things or which I had to think about uh, is my hair okay or where I thought um, am I just reading am I just doing performative reading Dee talks about this in one of her videos I've thought about that and I don't think that outweighs the amount of support and the fun that I've had sitting down talking about books. So thank you to everyone who has watched, everybody who has interacted. Um, it's been a great three months. Um, so thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for all of it. Thank you for sharing. I really do appreciate it. I will see you in my next video. Uh, on Sunday, I will no longer be putting videos on Wednesdays. Unless I do, then we're all going to be cool about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you. My tea is finished. I've been drinking peppermint tea throughout this. Um, and it's finished, meaning that it's time to wrap it up. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'll see you in my next video. And as always, remember to be kinder than you think is necessary. Bye.